Hello everyone, welcome to ET Studios and today we're having a look at the GTX 980 Ti from Gigabyte. This is a five year old graphics card at this point and I'd like to see how it does in 2020 and see if it's still worth buying at the cheap secondhand price it, you can find it at. The card has six gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM and I think that's pretty respectable for a card in 2020, which is it's similar enough to other cards in the region like the 1660. The card was quite commonly compared to the GTX 1070 when that was released, as well as the 1660 and 1660 Super once they were. So once the top of the line graphics card from Nvidia, let's see how it does in 2020 in some gaming benchmarks. My test system specs are on the screen now, and as you can see it is a fairly modern Ryzen 5 system with 32 gigs of RAM, and there shouldn't be any bottlenecking here from the CPU side. So let's get into some gaming tests and some benchmarks. Uh, almost all of these are free tests that you can download and compare to your own card, so if you have something a bit older or like a 1050, you can see how they go. Unigen Heaven is first on the 1080p Extreme preset with a score of 2324 and an average FPS of 92.3. Not bad for this older test, now let's move on to something newer. Unigen Superposition, also on 1080p Extreme, got 3642 with an average FPS of 27.25. This isn't great, but it is a very demanding test and can be quite difficult to run. 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme got an overall score of 2813 and a GPU score of 2730. This is a very easy test for you to repeat and see how it goes. It's a free benchmark on Steam if you get the demo. 3D Mark Fire Strike Extreme as well at 8315 and a GPU score of 8600. Not bad at all, and I think it's very respectable considering the card's age. Cinevench R15 OpenGL got an average FPS of 142.86, which is not bad, and this is a fairly old test, so not too relevant, but again, another free test you can get. Now to our only paid benchmark, Shadow of the Tomb Raider at higher settings, DirectX 11 got an average FPS of 69, and a GPU bound percentage of 17. Definitely not too bad, and I think it's a good pairing for the 3600. Now, on to something a bit different, VR. VR is a very interesting topic because it is obviously something a lot of people want to get into, but it can be quite expensive considering the prices of the headsets and GPUs. But if you try and get the secondhand graphics card, you could probably do it for a pretty decent price. Unigen Superposition on the VR Future spec was very low performance, and I wouldn't recommend it for anything super demanding. But on the VR Maximum preset, which is more realistic compared to what you'd be doing in your day-to-day -day VR experience, it got a very respectable score of 87.16 with an average FPS of 98.6. So not too bad at all, and I'm very impressed with the card. Obviously, this is suiting my daily needs fairly well, and I might eventually upgrade to something like the 1080 Ti secondhand, but if you're stretched on a budget, this card is definitely worth it. I'll put some prices up that I can find on sites like eBay. And it's obviously going to be a lot cheaper than, say, a 1070 or 1660, because those are both cards that are newer and are obviously going to be more expensive because of their age. My particular card did have some issues. I had a fan failure a couple months ago, and... Although it was very annoying, it was actually fairly easy to fix by just grabbing a spare fan, which you can find very easily because it's the same fan they use on a couple different cards. And you can just pop it in and it's all sorted. Not a very difficult one to switch out, you literally just unscrew the fan and plug in a new one. So I definitely think this card is worth it and obviously with my fan failure that was a bit of an annoyance, but if you are willing to take the risk, obviously that's not going to happen to everyone, and if you're willing to take the risk, it's definitely a decent option for 2020, and probably a couple years to come. It's by no means a low-end graphics card in 2020, and I would highly recommend it for anyone getting into 1080p or even low-end 1440p gaming at a budget. So if you want to get yourself a second-hand VR headset and a graphics card, this is definitely a good combo. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and if you did like the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more content like this, and some gaming content as well. Thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.